What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Game Day with Trey. Of course, this is your host, Trey, and today we're going to talk about this Thursday night full slate of NBA matchups that we got going on. So, first, we're going to start off with this game that starts off at 7 p.m. East Coast time. It is the Boston Celtics at the Washington Wizards. All right, so this line right now is at Boston minus 13 and a half, over under set at 233. And uh, right now, consensus money on the spread is on Boston. And as far as uh, over-under, 70% of the money is on the over. So 74% of the money is on Boston. 70% of the money is on the over. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at these two teams and uh, see how they're going to match up. So the Boston Celtics beat the Knicks in their home opener. The Boston Celtics are averaging 132 points on 50.5% shooting and allowing 109 points on 55.1% shooting. Jason Tatum is averaging 37 points and 4 rebounds, while Derek White is averaging 24 points. Points, three rebounds. Jalen Brown is is the third double-digit scorer, and Drew Holiday is grabbing four boards. The Boston Celtics are shooting 47.5 percent from behind the arc and 87.5 percent from the free throw line. Uh, the Celtics are allowing 36.7 percent shooting from deep and are grabbing 40 rebounds per game as of that last game. And then when you talk about Washington, well, Washington Wizards only won 15 games last season and haven't made the playoffs since 2020-2021. The Wizards enter the first full season under Brian Keefe, and uh, there's just not much much to like out there in Washington right now. Kyle Kuzma is proven to be a, a consistent, underrated player, and in addition, of Jonas Valanciunas uh, puts an adult in the room. However, it, it feels like Jordan Poole is just there for the vibes, and it's, it's quite disappointing, you guys. <laughs> All right, maybe the youngsters, Corey Kispert and uh, Alex Saar, can provide some hope, but this roster isn't competing for anything anytime soon. Uh, looking at the injury report right now, Sam Sam Hauser is questionable with the back uh, injury. Chris Stops, I think this is still out. And then when you're looking at Washington, uh, Kispert, he has, uh, he's probable with his back injury. Uh, Kyle Kuzma, he is has a personal uh, issue and he's going to be questionable sidelined for that personal reason. Uh, Bilal, Kula, Bilal is uh, probable with the finger and uh, Alex Saar, the center, he's also probable fighting off a thumb injury. Uh, Sadiq Bey, he's going to be out and Malcolm Brogdon is going to also be out. When you're looking at these two teams, you're looking at the matchup and what they've done the last 10 times they played out there. So, head to head, Boston runs the series 8 to 2. Boston runs it against the spread 6 3 and 1. And it's been 8 to the over, 2 to the under in the last 10 times. Boston beat them four times in a row last year. Uh, Boston did cover two out of the four. They did not cover the last time they played back on April 14th, where it was 132 to 122. All right, but uh, the lowest amount of points that Boston has scored against them was 126 back by last year on the 30th. Uh, the most points they scored was 133. Uh, the most points that uh, the Wizards have scored against them last year was 129, and the least was 107, guys. Uh, all four of their games did go over, with the lowest over-under being set at 226, and the highest being set at 231.5. and a half. <clears throat> All right, so... <laughs> Understanding all that, you got to understand who's going to actually pull this thing out. And the Celtics have won each of their last 10 games when playing with a rest disadvantage. The Wizards have lost each of their last six games, and the road team has covered the spread in each of their last four games between the Celtics and the Wizards. Uh, the Wizards have failed to cover the spread in each of their last four home openers against Atlantic Division opponents, and each of the Wizards' last seven games as underdogs has gone over the total points line. Each of the Celtics' last seven games against the Wizards following a home win have also gone over the total points line man the Wizards uh like in their last seven games last year they were 5-0-2 against the spread as double digit underdogs so uh, I did consider the points but at the end of the day man the Celtics are 0-3 against the spread in their last three games as double digit favorites uh, however the Wizards didn't do much to improve last year's roster, and they're running into the Celtics team that looks hungry and ready to fight. So uh, I'm going to say that if I was going to play a side, it would be the Celtics <clears throat> probably buy some points down, probably down to like minus 12 and a half or something like that. But uh, what I'm really looking at, what I'm really liking is the Celtics team total points over 122 and a half. That's what I'm going to lock in for this one, guys. And the next game on the slate is the Dallas Mavericks versus the San Antonio Spurs. This game is set to get kicked off at 7 p.m. East, or sorry, I'm sorry, 7:30 p.m. East Coast time, and uh, the line is Dallas minus seven and a half. The over/under is set at 228 and a half. All right, uh, the line has since moved to the, the Spurs plus eight, and uh, over/under has gone all the way up to 230 and a half. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at how these teams came out last year and what they did a little bit, right? So. Uh, <clears throat> 
The San Antonio Spurs won 22 games in back-to-back -back seasons. Greg Popovich returns to yet another year as he approaches three decades as head coach of the Spurs. The Spurs were must uh, were a must-watch basketball team regardless of the win-losses because of Victor Wembanyama last year. But they also improved, adding Harrison Barnes and Chris Paul. There's some leadership in the locker room now and guys who can create offense and make it easier for him to take some of the pressure off of the young superstar. So, Devin Vassell has also proven to be an above average scorer in the first few years. The Spurs still have work to do in terms of filling out the roster and giving Wimby a, a real chance, but there's no doubt this year's version of the Spurs is way better than last year's, man. Uh, the Spurs haven't made the playoffs since 2018, 2019, and haven't won a playoff series since Kawhi left. Now, when you talk about Dallas, you know, uh, Dallas Mavericks won 50 games last season, which ended uh, with a surprise NBA Finals berth. Jason Kidd enters his fourth year as head coach and has real expectations now. Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving are one of the best scoring duos in the league, and Luka is a strong MVP candidate every year. Now, the Mavs doubled down on their scoring punch by adding Klay Thompson. I don't think that was a good idea. Who? wasn't uh, who has been himself for the last few years they also got pj washington really grew up in the playoffs and Derek lively the second is coming off a, a hell of a rookie year so uh, there's depth questions with the mavericks but the offense is there and uh, there's multiple athletic bigs they can throw at teams guys so when you look at the injury report right now for the spurs it's a mass unit okay uh castle is probable dealing with the wrist injury uh bassy he is uh, questionable with the knee injury cisco or Sissoko, he's got an undisclosed probable uh, injury that he'll probably he's probable to play. Uh, Duke Jr., he's got also got an undisclosed que and he's questionable dealing with that undisclosed injury. Uh, Branham has got a concussion, so he's probable, and Vassell will be out dealing recovering from that foot injury. Of course, Luka Doncic starts off the season on a probable uh, with a calf injury. Kyrie, you know, he's out of hands, he's questionable, he's hampered by, but they'll both be out there. Kessler Edwards, he's he's got an ankle, he's questionable with. Brandon Williams, he's got a calf he's questionable with. P.J. Washington is questionable with the hip. Max Kleber is questionable with the ankle. And Dante Exum is actually out the game. All right, so uh, where's the money at on this game? Well, 57% of the money right now on the spread is on Dallas Mavericks. And 64% of the money is on the over. Okay, last 10 times these team, two teams matched up. Dallas Mavericks won 9 out of 10 times, so they're 9-1 straight up. They're 6-3-1 and one against the spread, and it's been 8 to the over, 2 to the under. They won all four last year with the lowest amount of points they scored being 113, and the highest amount being 144. The lowest amount of team points that the... Uh, that the uh, the San Antonio Sport Spurs scored was 93, and the most points they scored against them was 119 way back on December 23rd and October 25th. Uh, Dallas did cover three to four times. The only time they didn't cover was the last game, that 113 to 107, way back on March 19th. And their games were two over, or two over the first two of the season, and then the next two went under, guys. Uh, so take that with a grain of salt and get what you can out of that. So at the end of the day, right, uh, what you got to understand with these two teams is the Mavericks have won each of their last 11 night games against the Spurs. The Spurs have lost each of their last nine ga night games against, I mean, at American Airlines uh, or Rink Center. Uh, the Mavericks have also covered the spread in each of their last seven Thursday games as favorites. And the Spurs have failed to cover the spread in each of their last three night games at American Airlines Arena. All right, so uh, with the total points, man, each of the Spurs' last nine season openers have gone over the total points, and each of the Mavericks' last five games have gone under the total points line. All right, so uh, I, I need to see how improved this Spurs team can be <clears throat> before I can kind of back them with any kind of confidence. Uh, the Mavs not only made the finals last year, but they have 48 regular season wins. Uh, season covers, I'm sorry, and 59.2% cover percentage. Uh, so... That was the second best in the league last year, man. Only the Magic were better than the, than the Mavericks. So, uh, what am I leaning? I'm leaning Dallas minus that seven and a half. Uh, uh, and Wimby with a double-double. Uh, that's just where I'm at right now with these two teams. And then if I was going to look at the uh, team total, I might look at that, take a glance at that Mavericks team total over 118 and a half. Um... But that would be just a lean, guys. But I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Let's get on to the next one. So the next game we're looking at is going to be the Minnesota Timberwolves visiting the Sacramento Kings. All right. So this line is at uh, Kings plus one. Over under is at 227 and a half right now. 
Uh, there has been a little movement. It's now uh, Timberwolves minus one and a half, and over under is down to two twenty six and a half. So it's slight, t- slightly ticking downwards on that over under, guys. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at these two teams. All right, uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves will be hoping to bounce back after losing that opening season game to uh, to the Lakers, one ten to one hundred three, and on the road on Tuesday. Anthony Edwards led the team with twenty seven points on ten to twenty five shooting, and uh, newly acquired Julius Randle had added sixteen points. Points and nine boards, four assists. While Rudy Gobert, he tallied 13 points, 14 boards. Uh, as a team, the Grizz, uh, I'm sorry, uh, as a team, the Timberwolves shot 41% from the field and 13 of 41 from the three-point line. As they struggled early and had to work hard to cut that 19-point deficit to just four points in the fourth quarter before the Lakers kind of just slipped away out of their fingers, man. Meanwhile, when you talk about Sacramento Kings, man, they did. Uh, take another large leap last year they had 46 wins in the season last year uh they just we just felt like that some moves needed to be made and we saw plenty of that as the Kings shipped away Harrison Barnes, Chris Duarte and Davion Mitchell while acquiring a group of players highlighted by DeMar DeRozan, De'Aaron Fox is, is coming off a career year where he had 26.6 points, 4.6 boards and 5.6 assists per game while DeMontis Sabonis well, was a nightly triple-double threat who averaged 19.4 points, 13.7 boards. Uh, the Kings have been trending up for a while now but with the addition of DeRozan, I expect them to be make plenty of noise in the playoffs this year, guys. I mean, like, serious. So when you're looking at the injury report for these two teams, uh, Minnesota, Terry Shannon Jr., he's questionable with the toe. And then Sacramento, of course, Kevin Huerta, he's uh, probable with the shoulder. DeMar DeRozan has an undisclosed injury, and he's questionable dealing with that undisclosed injury. Jordan McLaughlin, he also has an ankle questionable. Uh, Trey Lyles, he has a groin, and he's questionable. Orlando Robinson, he has a knee, and he's questionable. And Devin Carter will be out of this game. All right, so the last 10 times these team, two teams did match up. And uh, hold up, first, the money the, the money right now on the spread is 61% of it is on the Kings. And then at the, as far as the uh, the total, it's 77, uh, 70% is on the over. So uh, looking at these two teams, last 10 times they have matched up. Uh, Timberwolves run it 6-4 to four straight up, 6-4 to four against the spread. And it's been 5 to the over, 5 to the under. The last year they both went 2-2 two and two against each other. Uh, when they played, or I'm sorry, they went... Uh, the the Kings won two times and Timberwolves only won one time last year. Kings scored 124 points twice, and the minimum amount of time that points they scored was 98, and that was in Sacramento. Now uh, the other the the as far as Minnesota, the most points they scored was 120, and they lost scoring 124 to 120 uh, in OT on March 1st. Uh, the games as far as who covered, it was two and two covering last year, and it went. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, it was Sacramento covered twice, all right, and then Minnesota covered when they won as well, right, and it went two over, one under, when Minnesota won, the game did go under, guys, all right, so uh, understanding these two teams and knowing how they play, you got to know this, right, the Timberwolves have won each of their last nine games as road favorites following a loss, the Kings have lost nine of their last ten home openers, and the Timberwolves have covered the spread in each of their last seven games as road favorites following a loss, uh, the Kings have failed to cover the spread in each of their last seven Thursday games, man. And eight of the Kings' last nine games as underdogs have gone under the total points line. And each of the Timberwolves' last four games as favorites against the Kings have gone over the total points line. All right, so I really like the addition of DeMar DeRozan to the young Kings, guys. Uh, that lineup is going to be pretty deep and it's got some good experience with a go-to player in the clutch situations now. You can almost say the same about the Timberwolves, who look good or better after acquiring Julius Randle, but at the same time, they did lose, all right? Uh, it's hard to pick these early games of the season because you really don't have a lot of data, And uh, but the, the Timberwolves were down by 19 points and fought all the way back. They didn't roll over, and, and that's a good sign, so I think they can come out swinging in this one. Uh, I like the Timberwolves, okay, in this one, minus the one or minus the one and a half. I also like a money line if you would just want to go ahead and just take the money line, guys. Uh, as far as over under is concerned, I do uh, I do like the fact that it's ticking towards the under. I probably would lean on the under the 226, but I might buy a point or two and get it back to that 227 and a half. I don't know, y'all. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next game. All right, and the next game will be the final game, and it's the Denver Nuggets versus the Oklahoma City Thunder. All right, so this game is set 
to kick off at 10 p.m. East Coast time. Uh, Denver minus two and a half. The over under is currently set at 224. All right, there has been some movement though. It's ticked up to two, or I'm sorry, yeah, up to 226, and it is Denver minus two, guys. All right, so. Uh, Looking at these two teams, man, you got to understand how they've been playing or how they did play last year. And the Oklahoma City Thunder, uh, they made a deep playoff run, had 57 wins in the regular season before coming short, coming up short against the Dallas Mavericks in the Western Conference Finals. Shea Gillis Alexander, uh, he continued to improve, finished with 30.1 points, 6.2 assists per game. And they got plenty of support from all their role players, whether it be Jalen Williams, Chet Holmgren, uh, in terms of player moves. Uh, the Thunder traded away Josh Giddy and acquired Alex Caruso, which was definitely a good one and they got as a hard steam to, to bolster those rebounds man uh well, meanwhile the denver nuggets they look good enough to reel off 57 wins last year in the regular season and blow past the lakers in the first round of the playoffs only to drop 3-2 uh lead against the young timberwolves in the western conference semifinals the nuggets needed to shake up the roster a bit and they made a move they got rid of kcp and reggie jackson uh to get dario sarge and russell westbrook via free agency i really like the addition of westbrook who can easily steer the off offense when Nicole Yochis is not on the floor. But the Nuggets hope this season relies heavily on Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. returning to form that they played in those championship years, guys. All right, so when you look at the injury report or for these two teams, Minnesota, Terrence Shannon, he's still questionable with the toe injury. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong game, guys. <laughs> when you're looking at these two teams, man, you talk about Oklahoma City and Denver, and you're looking at the injury report. All right, you're, you're, you're looking at uh, oh, uh, Jalen Williams. He is uh, out with the hamstring. Of course, Kendrick Williams, he's also out with the hamstring, with the knee. Uh, Alec Dukas, he's uh, probable with his hip. Uh, Isaiah Hartenstein's out with the hand. And Nikola Topic is also out with the knee. He probably missed the whole season because he had uh, ACL surgery right before the draft, I believe. Lead. All right, and then when you're looking at Denver, Denver's got some injuries as well. Peyton Watson, he's questionable with the hamstring. Uh, Jalen Pickett, his groin is probable. Aaron Gordon, he's got an undisclosed questionable injury he's dealing with. Jamal Murray, his knee has got him questionable out there. He's nursing. Uh, don't know if he'll be suiting up. And Dan Holmes, he's still out with the Achilles, you guys. Uh, so where's the money at in this game? Well, 64% uh, of the money on the spread is on Denver, and 68% of the money is on the over right now, guys. All right, so uh, last 10 times these two teams matched up, it's 5-5 five five even, uh, straight up. And then against the spread, it's 6-4. Six six and four. Uh, OKC runs the against the spread, and it's been 4 to the over, 6 to the under, and the last 10 times they played last season when they met. Uh, OKC won three of the four times. The most amount of points they scored was 119, and the least amount of points they scored was 95 in the first time they played on October 29th. Uh, it was 128 to 95. Uh, OKC did cover twice, and Denver covered twice. All their games went under. Matter of fact, they're on a one, two, three, four, five game streak of unders uh, with these two teams, guys. All right, so uh, take that with a grain of salt and understand where they sit at, right? Uh, the, Dem uh, the, the, the Thunder have lost each of their last six road openers against Western Conference opponents. The Nuggets have won each of their last eight Thursday night games at Ball Arena. The Thunder have failed to cover the spread in each of their last six games against Northwestern Division opponents. And the Nuggets have covered the spread in nine of their last 12 season openers against Western Conference opponents. Now, each of the Thunder's last six road openers against Western Conference opponents have gone under the total points line, and each of the last Last five games between the Thunder and the Nuggets, like I just told you, have gone under the total points line. So the Thunder is still a little shorthanded with Isaiah Hartenstein, Jalen Williams, and uh, Jalen Williams all on the injury report, while the Nuggets are coming uh, coming into this one at full strength. Uh, the Thunder are more than capable of pulling it off this upset to start the season uh, if they can get a big game from uh, from Shea Gillis Alexander. But I think the Nuggets are going to uh, get off to the, a flying start, all right, and uh, kind of make up for what they did at the end of the season last year. Uh, they won eight of their first nine games last year, so this should be a close one, but the Nuggets are fast starters, and they're always tough to beat at home, so I'm happy to go ahead and say we're going to take the Nuggets minus the two, and we're going to take the under the 226, maybe by a point under 227 or 227 and a half, guys. Even though it has been ticking up, I just don't, I don't see that. 
You know what I mean? But I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. Y'all have a blessed day. Stay safe. I hope this information has helped. And I'm going to see y'all at the window, man. Peace.